Okay, I'm going to show you how to manually set uh, the processor affinity for Skype. Uh, first off, you want to make sure that Skype is actually open, so if we have it minimized, just uh, right-click on the little Skype icon and open Skype. Uh, <clears throat> then what you want to do is uh, come down here and start your task manager. Uh, make sure you're on the Applications tab. You'll see Skype there. Uh, just right-click on it and left-click Go to Process and you'll see Skype.exe listed. Uh, right-click on that, left-click on Set Affinity, and in here you can set the affinity to whatever uh, processor you want to use. Uh, note that they start with uh, processor or CPU 0, so if you have uh, six cores like I do, it'll only go to five because it starts with zero. Uh, you would uncheck whatever process or you do not want to have uh, Skype running on. Uh, in this case, I've decided that I want uh, Skype to run on four and five, so those are the two that I have checked. Uh, you hit OK, and that's it. Now Skype's running on those two uh, processors. If you've set the processor affinity for Skype um, and then you exit the program or have to reboot your computer, you'll have to reset that processor affinity again. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you today how to create a special shortcut um, so that if you use that particular shortcut, it will uh, always start Skype with whatever processor affinity you want to have set. Um, the first thing you do is you find your Skype shortcut, you right click on it, and then you click on properties. Um, we're going to be navigating to this directory here, whatever is listed in your start in uh, or the first part of target uh, is what you're going to see where we're going to be going. Um, the quickest way to get there is by clicking on open file location. You'll notice here at the top that the file location is the same as what's listed in here. Um, I'll just delete these real quick so that you don't get confused um, or I don't get confused. Uh, now that we're here uh, this is where we're going to create our shortcut. Um, now something you're going to probably need is you might need a calculator or a way to convert uh, a binary number into a hexadecimal number. Um, that, in if you happen to have Windows 7, uh, Windows 7 does in fact have a calculator. Um, you can find it in uh, accessories and calculator. And most times you'll bring up a standard calculator like this. And if you have 7, you can set it to programmer. Um, and these are, uh, this is binary, uh, these zeros here. Uh, and you can set it to hex and uh, I'll show you what to do with that in a second here. Um, now what you want to do is you want to right click in an empty space and you can create go to new and text document. Um, just for the purposes of keeping it simple I'm going to name the document Skype. Um, now you can do this in any text editor as long as you save the file in this particular directory. The file must exist in whatever directory uh, in the same directory that the executable is. So if you wanted to modify some other program uh, in the same manner, you would have to put the shortcut in the same directory as the program that you're going to modify. And in this case, we're uh, uh, doing Skype.exe. Now we're not modifying the actual file itself, we're just creating a shortcut, but the shortcut has to be in the same directory as the file. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to edit that file. Uh, you can usually double click in it and it will open up a notepad or wordpad or something. Um, and what we're going to do now is you're going to type in start and then a slash uh, affinity and make sure you spell the word affinity right. Now this is where that uh, calculator comes in. Uh, what you need is you need a numeric value for the processor core that you're going to be enabling. Um, processor cores are calculated on the binary from right to left. Um, so I have six cores, so if I wanted to do mine on core six, there's core zero, core one, core two, 
core 3, core 4, core 5. And remember uh, that I have six cores, but the numeric value starts with zero. So if I turn it on for that final core in my system, or core 5, it's going to give me a hexadecimal value of 20, and I will put that value in here. Um, in case you don't have a calculator and you haven't found one yet, um, let me show this to you real quick. I've already done some conversions for you. Um, the number that you're going to be looking for is right here in this hex code line, and this is the core number listed here. Um, so if you need to pause the video or something and look at the number that you want to put in there, uh, these are the numbers that you would put in for those specific uh, cores. Um, you can actually set it for more than one core, but these aren't the same numbers. You wouldn't be able to just add these together. Um, you would have to either use the calculator or get a, uh, a, a conversion chart of some kind. But these are the binary codes for each of the cores. Um, and uh, at some point, maybe I'll make a video on how to actually convert binary to hexadecimal. Um, but that's the thing there. So in my case, I've put in 20. Now you have to put in the name of the program. And in this case, it's going to be Skype.exe. Now, some systems won't show you the extension, the .exe, but you do need that there. So make sure you type in Skype.exe. Um, I would say 99% of the programs are executables, and that's where the exe comes from. Um, and then that's it. And then you just you know save the save the program, and now you have this Skype.txt. Now, a text file is not an is not considered an executable program by Windows. So what we do is we change this .txt to .bat, which is a batch file, um, and that makes it a, an executable program. Um, now what we want to do is, because we don't need to come in here every single time we want to execute the program, I'm going to right click, hold down my right mouse button, drag it over here to my desktop, and create a shortcut. And now I have my shortcut. Uh, now what I'm going to do is, uh, and now this shortcut works just the way it is. Um, you don't have to do anything else and it will work and it will start Skype on that affinity but I want to show you how also how to make it look like the actual Skype shortcut so you can right click on this you can come down here you hit properties alright then you hit change icon okay now in in I'm using Windows 7 and this is just warning me that the the batch file that we created doesn't contain any icons in this programming that's perfectly fine you just hit OK there um, now you can choose any one of these icons but none of these icons look like the the Skype icon so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit browse um, and it should open up to the Skype directory that we were just in the same one that created the batch file um, and you click on skype.exe just left click on it once and then you hit open and you'll see that these icons changed and you can use any of these icons in here if you want um, I'm going to use the default Skype icon so I just hit OK and then I can hit apply and then OK and you notice that the bat file now changed to the actual Skype icon and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to rename it I'm going to type in the word Skype okay so that's our bat file right there now I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to show you um, that right now I have Skype running and, rem and, uh, and right now I have the affinity set on 4 and 5 so I'm going to turn on all of these just just for the purposes of showing you see the affinity is still there okay um, now if I exit out of Skype if I come in here and I close it out Skype's gone okay now if I use the regular Skype shortcut and open it up give it a second here there it goes and I go to the process you'll notice that all the affinities are reset again because you use the regular Skype uh, shortcut so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of Skype again there it goes now this time I'm going to use the Skype shortcut that we created Skype a second to catch up. There it goes. Go to my process. See? And the affinity is set to where I wanted it. 
So that's it. That's how you set up a shortcut so that every time you execute that shortcut, uh, Skype will execute with the affinity that you want, and it will work with any executable program. Um, so that's it.